Number 54, another huge guest. Big one. They just keep getting bigger. More this hardware week. on this episode, though. Yeah, not, a little too much. Almost. <laughs> but uh, this week, we have a very special guest joining us, senior forward and leading scorer for the defending champs. Yes, sir. UMD, Nick Sweeney is here. Nick, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm glad to be on. Hey, pumped out. I mean, the Swain show. So <laughs> we, we had to have you here, obviously. I mean, we needed a big guest this week. Yeah. Not that we, we haven't had a big guest in the following weeks, but now it's we're getting closer to the tourney. So we got to get right. some Hobie just, candidates, some defending champs, some whatever. We're just looking for somebody with a trademark and a lot of a lot of jewelry, like you said. Yeah. So. <laughs> trademark. That was, that was big. But uh, yeah, how are you feeling? You guys are coming off a big, you know, sweep of Western, uh, getting ready for Miami here. What's the what's the vibes like in the building? Yeah, uh, it's it's been good. I think obviously um, had a little stoppage, uh, kind of a little COVID outbreak. So t- took a week off after a few tough games against St. Cloud, and uh, it was good to get back play at play at home and and uh, with some family and, and friends in the building. And obviously get, getting two wins any any weekend the NCHC is uh, big for us. So yeah, it's it's been good, and um, obviously looking forward to getting to Miami, uh, traveling with the boys. Yeah, what about, I mean, just starting off in that pod, what was that experience like, feeling kind of trapped, seeing the same guys over and over again? I mean, yeah. everything yeah. was that like? Uh, it, was, it was actually a super fun experience, I think. Um, obviously, beginning of the year, just with COVID stuff, it's uh, it's not a normal year for sure. So not, not getting to know the guys as much, just uh, being in different locker rooms and, and doing all that stuff, it kind of sucked beginning of the year, so... Um, being in that, that hotel for a month long with everyone, you, you for sure get to know, know everyone <laughs> on a different level. So, um, yeah, it was, it was an awesome experience and, um, good to play just hockey again. It was first game for sure. Felt, uh, felt a little rusty out there, but, uh, mm-hmm. it, yeah. it was good to be back and yeah, they did a good, good job on the pod. Gotcha. Absolutely. Do you guys like UMD obviously coming in with, I would say the most respect there, you know, back to back defending champs. Did you have the master suite? You know, being an assistant <laughs> captain in there, or what was your room situation we, like? I uh, I actually was roomed with uh, Jesse Jocks. We had probably six six or seven guys got their own room, but mm-hmm. I got uh, I got the low end and, and had to have a roommate. But I mean, That's it, a captain it was still move. good. Played, played a lot of Xbox and stuff, so there you go. kept yeah. us busy. Yeah, that'll hold it down. Okay. Now we, we've had uh, a few dogs on with Perunovic, Shepard, and then uh, Biondi last year before he got there, but. Uh, How's yeah, Biondi this year? What's your opinion on the freshman? Uh, I, I love him. He's he's a funny kid. Um, he's got to leave uh, his Hermantown stuff in his in the past, but uh, he talks about <laughs> that a little bit too much. But no, he, he he's yeah. an awesome kid, and um, I mean, super good hockey player, and um, you can just tell he's he's going to be uh, good for uh, the Bulldogs for for a few years or however long he sticks around. So um, yeah, he, he's awesome. How about uh, how about the rest of that recruiting class? There, the freshman class. I mean, are you guys? Just suited to win another one this year with those guys. Yeah, I think I think everyone come in. Um, they they've been awesome so far. Kaiser's been huge for <laughs> yeah. us on on the back end. I mean, and get, getting all that hype compared to guys like Perunovic or Eddie. I mean, obviously when you when you get those names thrown around, it's, it's pretty special. So mm-hmm. guys like that and um, everyone, I think that they've done a good job of stepping in and, and being impact players for us after losing losing some big guys last year. So. Um, yeah, they've all done done great, and uh, they're going to continue to do do some good things for us at the end of the year. I like that. How would you say like your role has changed this year? You know, being a senior, wearing an A for the team. You know, how are you being a leader for those young guys, and you know, getting them kind of to step up to fill those roles, like you know Kaiser is for Perunovic and so on. Yeah, I I think the biggest thing for me is just kind of not really changing too much, but just leading by example. I think every single day. Um, and I think it starts in practice. And that's one thing that I learned being a freshman guys like Carson Kuhlman and, and Jared Thomas, those guys, when I was a freshman were huge seeing, yeah. um, right. Carson Kuhlman his work ethic and everything, everything mm-hmm. like that every day is, it was pretty special. So, um, and that's just contagious. So kind of just lead by example. Um, when you need to be a voice in the locker room, kind of, kind of have that voice, but for me, kind of just 
just not changing too much, playing my game, um, doing things that uh, that make the team successful. And I think that it's contagious and those guys see it and uh, they're going to want to do the same thing. Like, God, just prepared right now. I mean, just <laughs> firing on all <laughs> national centers. champ on every level. Yeah, we expected uh, it. Talk about the job that Salen's done there in though, and like the just the recruiting pieces that you guys got. You know, what's what do you think is the biggest recruiting piece, I guess, that Duluth has, other than the hardware sitting in the locker room? <laughs> um, I think right now, I think our coaching staff is yeah. is something that sets everything apart. I think um, I mean, obviously Sandy is um uh, he's proven how how great of a coach he's been over the last ten years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But now you can really enjoy this, all right? Because we're staying here. And the best thing is we haven't played our best game yet. Yeah. So you know what? We will. And, um, but guys like Adam Kraus, um, bringing in Derek Plant, mm -hmm. um, those guys are two two guys that are so, uh, you can approach them, talk to them about anything. And um, they're such players, coaches, that it makes it so, just feel like you're talking to another person about the game of hockey. It's not that coach kind of. Mm -hmm. aspect in your face all the time so i think that's one of the hugest things right now for for us as a program that that guys are going to want to come in and and you talk to those coaches it's it's something special and um obviously just the culture too i mean uh winning i mean that helps a lot a lot of things so <laughs> yeah um, absolutely <clears throat> and i think they've done an awesome job of of bringing in the guys like like we kind of talked about in order to have that success for for a long time so um, but yeah, coaching for sure is the one thing that that stood apart for me and and the guys to come for sure. Like not answer. to be left out, the Amzo though, in that fan base. I mean, yeah, just no, diehard fans are everywhere. Nuts. Yeah. Exactly. Has that been a little, you know, difficult to adjust to at first? Like, you guys are just getting back to playing. An yeah, Amzo it's got to it's got to affect the big but, schools like you know UMD Nordak the most. Like, yeah, like not having, it's, having it's that. It's weird for sure. Like, we played St. Cloud at home. Um, two weekends ago and like everyone was super excited to play at home but no fans in the building i kind of <laughs> stepped out there and it, it really felt like we were just having like like going out there for another practice actually at first like it was weird wow. like you had to get kind of get right. in that mindset again and and once the puck drops though you like the pace of play and everything is you you really don't notice the fans too much but for warm ups it was for sure for sure a weird <laughs> yeah. thing with no, nobody in the building but um yeah, once the puck drops, you, you kind of forget about it and just and just play. But um, but it's not so nice playing at home again. And um, and last week we got a few family in the building and stuff, so it's nice to nice to have them. But um, it for sure is it's different. Mm -hmm. And they're so now they're doing family and like some you know extended from the team, I guess. Which is like yeah, personnel. We got, last weekend we got two tickets for family members, and then. Um, they let in 20 extra students. So we had, <laughs> we had 20 students behind that chair. There you go. Hey, it's better than nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I That's bet the they made so much we noise. They had to be so juiced to be there. Hopefully like four weeks <laughs> yeah. from now, it's like 60 students or 80 students. I mean, that's what I want. To yeah, be. they got to just keep expanding on it. Do you guys, yeah. like, do you know of any of what they're planning on doing at Amsoil? Because we got to get there. <laughs> we got to get yeah. there. <laughs> they, uh, they put on, they put a tweet out, I think, um, at like one o'clock and the, I mean, it was only 20 tickets, but I think they were gone in like 15 minutes or something. You had to go to the ticket office and, and get your tickets. They were gone like 15 minutes. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. So we have to be in Duluth. And ready. <laughs> yeah. So, so we're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> be I'll try and get an insider tip and tell you guys when to be at the ticket office. There you <laughs> go. I mean, media, course, media should be in need. free. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. So. yeah. We'll show them the ECH. <laughs> we'll show them it. Yeah, exactly. Don't swipe up. We'll get there. But, you know, let's talk about like this last summer. You know, how much did this past summer more than any just suck just not having a victory parade? You know, like was that <laughs> yeah. feeling a little bit different for you guys? It's like, it, it was weird. I think, uh, obviously, it's been three years and I haven't lost my last game in college hockey yet. So it's, it's <laughs> been a last summer was for sure uh, pretty weird, but. Um, May term, we normally have May term up in Duluth and that's when we kind of get all the freshmen back and, um, kind of get them used to everything. And just that aspect was, was a lot different, not having that and, and meeting all the guys and everything, but yeah, it was, it was a weird summer for sure. And, um, was thinking more things would be back to normal by, by now, but obviously, um, still affected by, by COVID. So, um, yeah. but no, just taking a day at a time and. 
hopefully more things will open up soon. I like that. Was there ever any, you know, thoughts of making the leap to the next level for you? Obviously, you know, guys like Perunovic, Sandberg, uh, Richards made the jump. Were you ever thinking that route? Or? Yeah, because you're making, kind of right on the bubble with a bunch of guys that didn't know if they're going to have their season. You've seen a bunch of schools canceled this year. So, I mean, right. what was that experience like for you? Yeah, yeah I, for me, honestly, I, I think at, at the end of the year, um, obviously it ended so quick and, mm-hmm. um, I didn't want to like rush to make a decision, but honestly, it wasn't really something I, I talked about too much. I think from the beginning, um, I knew that I kind of wanted to come back, um, get my degree from Duluth, um, play in my senior year. I knew I was going to kind of have that leadership role. And, um, it's tough to pass up on an opportunity when, when like kind of talked about the coaches earlier, just being able to develop another year and playing college hockey, playing in, um, what obviously I'm biased, but best conference in college hockey, in my opinion, I think yeah. it's pretty tough to pass up something like that. So, um, yeah, I think it was a pretty easy decision on that point, on that standpoint for me to come back. And, um, but, um, like I said, I mean, it was, it was tough, but ultimately it was, it was an easy decision. I love that answer. Yeah. And still, I think technically I'm giving it the three Pete, you know, possibly <laughs> could have been a four Pete. The third ring is going to look even nicer. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna keep talking it up. Could you imagine though if you did have like three rings, not to you know, three rings and going for a fourth though? Like, yeah, that would be insane. Plus, with the same squad, like I'm sure, if you guys won three in a row, do you think Scotty and those guys would have came oh, back? That's a good question. What are the odds there? Yeah, I I do not know. I think, I mean, it would have been tough not to. Yeah, how I do mean, you not? Right? Like, you're going for no one could ever break that record if you did get that fourth. It'd be no, unbroken. I think, yeah. I think Michigan. Like was it was it nineteen sixty or something? 60 they something, won three yeah. in a row. Yep. But I don't think anyone has ever won four in a row. So the game's changed a lot since the sixties and seventies. I'll say that yeah, it's much harder exactly. to win three in a row now. A little bit. God damn, I've been sweet. Yeah. So if that the third ring, let's say you get it, what what fingers are going on? <laughs> what are we thinking? Um, I have, I got the first one for my ring finger, second one for my pointer. <sighs> so. <laughs> Maybe I mean, pinky? throw them right. <laughs> throw them right. <laughs> throw it on the middle finger and oh, I'll just have, oh. <laughs> have three. <laughs> the trio. No, I, uh, I like well, that but, answer. Uh, I mean, obviously, it'd be pretty cool, but uh, I, was, I mean, who knows what's going to happen to it at the end of the year this year. I mean, I hope I hope the, the tournament everything is, is right. smooth and re- everything goes all That's my biggest as good as it can be. So mm-hmm. Yeah, knock on wood. All hoping that, yeah. uh, you know, the Pittsburgh venue pays off at the... As, yeah, exactly. You know, all the tournaments PPG. line up. Yeah, yeah. PPG. I mean, I just want to get to Frozen Four. That's all I want to see. I mean, we're planning to go there. Um, yeah. Did they? Did they ask you guys for a preference on where to play this year? Yeah, like <laughs> your room's booked. I'm assuming. You know, <laughs> you and the no. fellows. We should have asked if we want to play in Pittsburgh or where. Nice <laughs> <laughs> feeling. You want to go back to Little Caesars? I, I mean, know. you guys have done pretty well at the X. Um, yeah. I mean, true. God. Let's talk about, uh, yeah, like which, I mean, 2018, 2019, obviously like different situations. So you guys got in the tournament, you know, yeah. let's, let's start with 2018. Like, you know, you know, very like 0.0001 mm-hmm. chance of getting yeah. in, you know, just what was that first run like where obviously it was just a, you know, a roller coaster to get in and from the get go. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. I think, um, first half of the year, I think we ended, um, the first half, I think second to last place in the NCHC. And we were all like, well, we have 10 freshmen, like what, what's this going to be like the second half? And, um, we went to Dartmouth, um, for a Christmas tournament and we had, I think three guys gone at world juniors. And it was honestly one of, I think the biggest weekend for us as, as a group to come together. And, um, we won the tournament and, um, it kind of just started us on a run for the second half. And, uh, like you said, we barely slipped in and that kind of just shows that that's the best thing I think about the NCAA tournament is, um, you barely get in you get, you win four games and, and that's what happens. So it's, yeah. anyone has a chance to win at any single uh, season and that's what makes it so special. But no, it was, it was pretty crazy playing down at the X in St. Paul, um, 18,000 fans. And I think before the national anthem ch- chanting UMD, I mean, it was, was gross. it was crazy and um that for sure is something that i mean obviously i'll never forget it but uh it was it was something special for sure 
I was at Duluth for that one. I had a chance to go. It was bad seats, but I was just like, I'm going to grandma's. Yeah, Yeah, I want to take this just quick time out to thank you for two great times at grandma's for both 2018 (laughs) Two near-death experiences. Yeah. Yeah. From me to you. I remember there was people climbing on the the light post, like the street light post after the first championship. Yeah. That was nuts. I remember remember seeing those. We were like all on the bus like the next day and we were seeing all those videos. It's got to pump you up, man. Just for your own wall. Crazy. Oh, like, man. what did we do? People were throwing <laughs> chairs across the restaurant. It was just nuts. The bar, it was nuts. Yeah. Oh, I saw someone get knocked out with a pitch. <laughs> just like, I was like, I got to get out of here, man. But it was good while it lasted, though. Oh, like, yeah. Before this place gets burnt down. Oh, my God. So that was 2018. And then 2019, you know, just touch on, like, I mean, game winners, you were obviously clutch in, in both playoff runs there. But, you know, talk about the double OT, you know, versus St. Cloud winner, you know, t- just to lead into it. Yeah, that. I mean, that game, it felt like the national championship game that I think anyone on our team could could have told you like that. That felt like it. And, um, mm. I think we were, we were kind of talking about it a little bit ago. I mean, I don't remember who, who I was talking to, someone on our team. And, like, I don't think people realized, like, how good, like, obviously St. Cloud got upset against AIC in the first yeah. round of the turn, but I don't think people realized how good St. Cloud was that year. Like, they were they were a powerhouse, like the Zot. Show mm-hmm. like they they had it all and i mean that game when we beat them in the ncac championship it was it was crazy so it was it was pretty cool and obviously it's it, it made it made it even better score on the double t winner but i think it was Absolutely. it was a pretty cool experience just for everyone on our team yeah oh they were like i mean they outshot aic by how much yeah that was a crazy <laughs> game in itself lots of shot, money on that game that was wild but that, that back i did but just back to your point anyone can beat anyone in that tournament just three yeah, periods exactly. man that's it so exactly oh it's a perfect setup or, i mean and yeah. then you guys your game against bowling green that was nuts too i was worried there for a minute and just one squeaked in and there you go it's all you need <laughs> yeah, yeah you know? that's and, they yeah they played us tough to all 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 game long and i think kind of went back just having that mindset i think everyone in the locker room like we yeah. knew like we can't lose this game and um yeah like you said i got a greasy one and <laughs> the rest is history from there so it was uh, but but oh no, yeah that that second one too i mean obviously winning a national championship no matter no matter what is it's pretty crazy and um it was it was a fun fun run being on buffalo um after we we all went to uh Alex, I follow his parents have a have a bar out in Buffalo, so all family. Oh like family sure, that parents, one ended yeah. well. <laughs> yeah. No, it was it was it was a fun time. Just family, friends, everyone that was there, and and yeah. uh, I mean, those both those two nights are I mean something you'll remember for the rest of your life, and be able to tell so many people about it down the road. It's it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, I mean, I was going through your Instagram, just creeping your Instagram today, but. Your picture with your old lady on the glass of the trophy is probably the grossest pick I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah. How many picks uh, do you get to get like that, man? Like, better. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. No, that's good stuff. But how about, you know, winning at the X2, though? You know, you're you drafted by the Wild. First of all, congrats on that, by the way. Oh, but how about you. how about winning one there at the X? Yeah, I that, that was crazy. You know, you're from uh, Minnesota, too, like so that's adds to it. Uh, <laughs> the, before the National Anthem uh, against Notre Dame in the, in the championship, mm-hmm. When the whole building was chanting UMD, it was goosebumps on. Oh, I bet it was. It was crazy. And once the building kind of calmed down, that it had the national anthem, I think we all kind of just had to settle in. And um, it it was wild and kind of the same thing, like being being able, like there's so many people like that were able to be there too in Minnesota that that were able to watch family and and friends and and everybody that it made it kind of that much better of an experience. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of the crazy ride uh, that that we talked about, just barely squeaking in the ups and downs that whole year. I think it made it made it uh, that much better, and um, to cap it off at the X was was pretty cool. Absolutely, beating Minnesota. We're all Minnesota kids too. We went to Bloomington Jefferson actually, and you went to Lake Tulsa yeah. South, and we're an absolute stud there. I remember those days. We graduated fifteen, <laughs> you fourteen, fourteen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, just talk about playing Minnesota high school hockey though. How did that prepare you for you know both your time at Waterloo and then now Duluth? Yeah. Um, growing up in Lakeville, I mean, obviously seeing the state tournament and everything, that's, that's everyone, every kid's uh, dream when you're growing up in Minnesota. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah jealous. high school. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never, I never got the opportunity. So uh, no, yeah, neither uh, did we. I m- missed on that, but, uh, um, 
but just high school hockey in general, Minnesota, it's, it's so cool. Like, um, the experience playing with your best friends every single day. I mean, it's tough to, to pass up on an experience like that. Um, obviously I, I love my senior year, but, uh, kind of, I mean, obviously it's a different situation for everyone, but, um, being able to play three years at Lake LaSalle, play with my best buddies. And, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pass up that experience for the world. It was, um, also huge for my development. And, um, obviously without it, I wouldn't, wouldn't be here today. So, um, yeah, never forget where you came from. I think a, a lot of people always say that. So, yeah, uh, Lake LaSalle was, was a special, special place. And, um, yeah, for sure got me to where I am today. And then your experience at Waterloo, I mean, that place is always insane too. Um, yeah, very, very team. skilled team the last five years or whatever it's been. Oof. But um, yeah. how was that playing in Waterloo in the East Row? Yeah, I, I, I love Waterloo. That's, I'll still to this day say it was two of, two of my favorite years of my life uh, going down there and playing. And um, obviously middle of nowhere, Iowa, not, not right. too much to do other than, <laughs> other than hockey. So mm-hmm. the diehard fans every single night that, ringing the cowbells oh, it's, God. Uh, <laughs> it's almost I gets mean, too much but i mean yeah, yeah exactly it gets it gets pretty uh, rowdy in there but no i went to uh, graduated from waterloo west high school my senior year um for sure a different experience than than like <laughs> um and then i mean and then playing playing my year after too um it was yeah two of the best years of my life i think coaching staff down there is awesome just the players that you see come out of there Besser and yeah. all these other guys I mean um just just a powerhouse all it's every year so um I had a huge two huge years for my development and um yeah I, I loved it down in Waterloo I love that and you committed to UMD out of high school correct like 2013 yeah, my, early my before my sophomore year of high school so <laughs> okay. like I think like October or something before my like that. before my sophomore season and was there any other teams you were ever considering or like what made you commit to be a bulldog you know right then um, and there so i played elite league my sophomore year um and had a pretty good start this season and then i kind of started mm-hmm. talking to a few schools um so kind of just the backstory i guess uh so Derek plant was at Duluth at the time um so he was the one who originally recruited me mm-hmm. and uh he came, I remember at a practice, um, at St. Thomas Arena, I, I, I had to go introduce myself to him because you can't, you can't, uh, talk to the kids before or whatever. So oh, I had to yeah. go up and introduce myself and talk to him and stuff. And, um, we, we figured out a, a time I could go up there and visit, um, went up there with my family and went to a game against Notre Dame. And, um, I kind of just fell in love with everything. I mean, um, not, not being too far away from home. Um, the coaching staff, kind of like I talked about, and just kind of the, the culture and everything here. Um, I kind of fell in love with it. Um, I talked to Ohio State a little bit. Um, but honestly, I really didn't talk to too many other schools. I think Duluth kind of came. I was I was pretty young, but um, I think I kind of fell in love with it right away. And um, I don't know, I kind of just totally skipped mm-hmm. around. But Derek Plant was there. He left and then he came back last there this year. So it kind of came full circle. He recruited me, he left and then he came back full circle, but no, yeah, I just fell in love with it right away. And, um, obviously very, very good decision that I came here. So, um, <laughs> it's, it's been awesome. Yeah, definitely the right move. <laughs> There's no, no yeah, regrets exactly. in that. So that's, that's awesome. That what would you say? Uh, what's your favorite college memory away from the rink? Away, Ooh, like it. away from the rink. Yeah. That's tough. I <laughs> think, um, <laughs> honestly, May term. Yeah. Um, kind of talked about it's, it's just the super, especially after winning too. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, it's a time I think a few guys, most of the guys actually, they take a class and everyone's up here. Every freshman, freshmen are staying on. We have, I have six guys in my house and then we normally had like, two or three freshmen that are just sleeping on the floor on the beds <laughs> down the living room. Yeah. Everyone's kind of just packed in the house and um, we work out in the morning and then go to the beach, um, kind of just hang out with the guys. And um, I think that there's was... no better, like that's what college is all about. Just being with the, being with the guys, like having those experiences. I mean, outside, outside of the ring, kind of those are the things you're going to, going to remember for the rest of your life. And Absolutely. Um, I think that kind of, that's, that experience is it's a fun fun month and just being with the guys i mean 
You can't. You can't beat that. Mm-mm. Well, in nope. Duluth, when it actually gets nice outside, like you said, yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Exactly. It's beautiful, beautiful, and in, in, uh, in May and in the summer months, it gets pretty cold in the winter. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's brutal in the winter. I'm admit yeah, that. It's like it's, a chat on the thermostat. You know? Chat's thermostat. Yeah. <laughs> Just holding it down. <laughs> you gonna ask yeah. the question right now? Yeah, true. You know what's uh, so obviously Shep Daddy no longer with the team, but God, does he have God. like an app on his phone to control the thermostat in the locker room, or what's <laughs> how is he you know maintaining his dad like duties for the team? Oh Shep, man, that guy, that guy is something special. Uh, <laughs> uh, he Shep is Shep is awesome. I mean, oh, yeah. that guy is that guy is crazy playing however many games he did in a row. Yeah. That, just, that guy's just a tank. Guy's crazy, he's a tank, but, uh, man. Now he's I mean, at, uh, is he going to Hershey? I don't know if he's getting the call up or what. I, mean. I think he's hurt right now. He, uh, he got hurt. Shit. Um, but I know he won like goalie of the week and yeah, in the coast the first like okay. week. So yep. obviously doing the same thing that he did here, but I mean, and I don't think anyone expected anything less, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah hopefully, hopefully he'll get called up once he gets healthy. Yep. Yeah. Never Absolutely. count him out. No, don't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Unless you want to yeah. be grounded. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's coming. He'll get the belt out. Yeah, you know that's all over. <laughs> belt. <laughs> you don't want that. Should we uh should we run into speed round? Yeah, let's do a speed round quick. Okay. So we're just gonna throw in like you know sound animations and stuff afterwards. So it's intense. You know, just put yourself in that right. that mindset here. Uh, do you want, right. Do you want to rip the first one, James, or should I? Uh, yeah, I'll rip the first one. All right, let her go. Uh, favorite favorite guy to play with all time at Duluth. Ooh. Favorite dog. Pick size. Yeah, Justin Richards. Oh, I like that. Okay. What about uh, the current year? Who's got the best style on the team coming to the rink? Um, Ben Pat. Ben okay. Pat. What's what's he repping? Just good style suits. Suit game is on point every <laughs> single game, and it's tough to tough to be that guy. Tough yeah. to be. What about who told uh, Prunovich it was a good idea to wear a fedora <laughs> to the? To the holy uh, ceremony. I don't think anyone told him. I think he that guy just makes his own decisions. And That's true. Okay. Whatever he says goes. It's the boldest thing <laughs> yeah. I've ever seen. I loved it though. I'm all for it. Yeah, I got his jersey behind me. You, you know? do. You do yeah, have the Jay Haney number. Cool. Cool. There we go. <laughs> no, DHK hooked it up. <laughs> what about uh, you want to go next one? Yeah, let's go. The, we're going to the locker room here. Uh, funniest guy in the team in the room there. Uh, Jesse Jacks. Jesse Jacks. Okay. How about uh, wor- worst music playlist? Who who doesn't get the ox in the room? Like that. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's got a few. Matt he, Okay. Matt Cairns. He gets he gets the ox in the locker. That's the worst part. <laughs> what what's he playing? Uh, we tell him we, like before practice we like listen to country mm-hmm. and he he puts on country that we've never even heard before <laughs> and we're just like all right just not it. Yeah, <laughs> that's tough. We have uh, on Inside Authority here that you're a big Justin Bieber fan. Is that true? Yes, what? I love Justin. I actually Jeez, just uh, ordered a sweatshirt from Justin Bieber sweatshirt. So well, let's go. Nice sweatshirt, what? nice. One. Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a big fan. Uh, he's a stud. What's uh, what's like the go-to song or like best song from him that you like? Oh, uh, I like uh, his old stuff and then newer stuff. Intentions, Intentions. new one. That's funny. It's tough to beat that one. Let's jump back into <laughs> more serious questions. Like, who on the team you would you say is like that guy eats the most pucks? Oh, that's like an important question. Yeah. Uh, Radius Matt Cairns. Mm. Matt Cairns. Okay, so yeah. he, he makes up for it. It sounds like yeah, the he, does. Course. he, he, does. he has to. <laughs> it's coming full yeah. circle. There we go. What uh, about uh, what's your pregame routine? Like, is there anything ooh, yeah. superstitious? Any? Um, I was actually just talking to Matt Anderson about this and I kind of, I don't really do a, a whole lot. I, I nap normally, but I've been trying to get away from napping a little bit, kind of just staying loose and not really doing, doing a whole lot. And I mean, I take my stick before every game, but I'm not a super, super superstitious person. So yeah. just go with the flow and win championships. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> collect hardware what about uh like when did swain show start like was that way back in lakeville um, south um i think it was because you got it on twitter too like respect yeah <laughs> respect. my junior year of high school maybe okay damn i think okay. i don't even remember did somebody i just... think so one of the somebody started calling me it and kind of just just stuck <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it works. Yeah. Was it? Was it? Yeah. Oh, now I'm throwing it back to high school. I can't. For, was it Clues or was it you? 
got five goals against Bloomington Jefferson. One of one of you two just buried us deep. I mean, it's probably uh, goals. I, I probably think goals. I had four. I think it's I had four. four in one night. God, that's gross. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it was only four. Clues, clues, clues had five goals against everyone. Though. That's that true. <laughs> So fun to watch when I was younger. Who, uh, who, who would? Last, we're running out of time here, but uh, you know, who would yeah. you compare your game to the most in the in the, in the show? Oh, that's tough. Um, or is there anyone you try to model your game after? I should say. Yeah, I, uh, I like like Jake Gensel. Yeah, I think kind mm-hmm. of a goal scorer. I mean, um, plays that offensive game, but also a really good two hundred foot player. Obviously, any guy that gets to play with Crosby is. Yeah, he's a pretty right special in. player. So <laughs> I think um, I like try and model my game after a guy like him. Someone who works hard, can score, and play play in any kind of uh, situation in the game. I like that. I like, what about uh, you know? I noticed you're not obviously a big penalty minutes guy. That's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's your last year here. Like, what are your odds? You know, you get just at least one game misconduct just <laughs> under the belt. Just see how it feels. Oh. Yeah. I uh, I had three three games in a row in the pod. I got penalty. So. That was That's something. That was pretty crazy, but <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, I'm not putting anything. Ned Jeopardy, uh, yeah. There's, there's no. Uh, I mean, I guess there's a chance for that. Well, I guess we'll see how the the rest of the eleven games yeah. go. Yeah, okay. you gotta drop the mitts. Yeah. You gotta drop the mitts. Anyway. Watch, watch. It'll happen like first round of the tournament or something. <laughs> no, <that'd be> terrible. <laughs> yeah. It's the time you don't want. It. Yeah, maybe yeah. not then. But then we'll at least be able to make a clip. And that's yeah. true. Pot will go viral. Boom. Exactly. <laughs> Done. That's what we need. Okay. I like that. Uh, we just got to keep ripping questions mm-hmm. till it ends here. What about, you know, for our younger listeners out there that are, you know, playing high school hockey, playing juniors, like what mm-hmm. is your advice to, you know, keep going to that next level and, you know, have the success that you've had? Um, I think just, I think consistency. I think um, that's the one biggest thing that over my four years in college that I've really, uh, tried to work on. I think, um, I really learned that it, it starts, it really does start in practice. I think it's kind of cliche that everyone says that, but it really is a huge thing. And, um, I think the, the more consistent you can get with your practice, I think carries over your games so much. And, um, so yeah, that, I think that's, that's one of the biggest things is just playing your game and, and sticking to what you can do every single night. And, um, yeah. I mean, if you're working hard and playing your game, I think there's not too many things that, that can go wrong. So consistency for sure. I love that. I like that. That's the word of the pod. We got to <laughs> be more consistent. God damn <laughs> I do want to touch on one more question here. Uh, back to Minnesota here with the, the wild, you know, what was the experience like for you to be drafted by your hometown team there? Yeah. Uh, it was pretty crazy being, uh, it was my third year eligible in the draft. I, my first two years, I didn't really talk to any, any team. So, um, I talked to a few more teams my third year, but, um, seeing my name, um, go to the Minnesota wild is pretty cool moment for me and my family. And, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty special and, um, very fortunate for that and hoping, hoping one day I could put on that sweater. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it, it was pretty cool. Anyway, if you have three ships, it's going to be hard to say no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the plan. Is that, do you have any other? Questions. um we recovered a lot but i mean i just want advice personally from the from the <laughs> champ uh any advice for ech and how to keep growing the game yeah true i mean you're trademarked help yeah us out how here. does how does the game grow here college yeah. hockey how does the game grow of college hockey yeah how do we get it to grow more man it needs to needs to get bigger um i don't know that's a tough question i think i think the game is definitely just in general growing i think that it's pretty cool. I think, I mean, seeing all you guys, I know, I know everyone's been talking about kind of just like the women's hockey and stuff. I think that's a huge, mm-hmm. huge part of kind of promoting that and, and just showing that the game is for everybody. I think that's the biggest thing. I mean, obviously with everything that's been going on, the game of hockey is for everybody. And, um, it's a pretty cool sport and it's something that brings everybody together. So, um, yeah, the game, the game of hockey is for, I think that's the biggest thing. Everyone, everyone's got to know that. So, um, and you guys do an awesome Absolutely. job with that. So it's, it's pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. That's definitely, especially with, you know, just the climate and today, just everything going yeah. on, like, just got to know that it obviously brings people together. It's a safe space. Like, Hey, we're thankful to have the game back too, you know, yeah. come last year. Like we didn't know when, when we're getting back on the ice or anything. So yeah, we had nothing yeah. to do. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> so no, we're just thankful to have the game back and we're thankful to have you on the show on um, this yeah. week, Nikki. Thanks so, for being here. Yeah, man. Yeah. No, we wish you the best of luck the rest of this year and go get your third. Yeah, oh, yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate yeah, it. Absolutely. Hey, man. have a good one. We'll be watching the games this weekend. So 
All Fair right, enough. sounds good. Hopefully, two more dubs this weekend. Hopefully, yep, well, I'll, I'll book it yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, all, all right, right, brother. Hey, take care. Now. All right, peace out. So that was a wrap with our boy, the Swain Show. I mean, the leading scorer of the show, UMD, mm-hmm. uh, back-to-back champs here. <laughs> uh, still defending champs, people forget. They uh, could have had a three-peat, possible four-peat, but that's what happens when, you know, I think North Dakota came up with COVID-19. And just to put a <laughs> Playing stop on Nodak? <laughs> yeah, somebody did. Maybe St. Cloud, they're a little bitter about 2019. Uh, but yeah, that unfortunately split it up. And, you know, Swain Show said from the beginning he wanted to stick around. Like, no doubt he's coming back with the boys. You know, had that option to wear the A. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, there's so much talent coming back to you, so there's not a whole lot to think about. And he wanted a degree. I mean, all good things. We, That's why you love college hockey. You got this guy back, and he's tearing it up his senior year. Yeah, but could you imagine if they had all those guys stay for this year? Oh, I mean, God, I wanted it. <laughs> Plus, the recruiting class this year. I know. Nuts, too. I mean, I mean that would have been really unfair for the rest of college hockey. It would have. They would have been better than the Gophers, and the Gophers are putting up big yeah. numbers this year, as we saw this past weekend. But not that they aren't better. I mean, they're probably right there with him but, uh, right now. But it's... uh. Definitely something I wish I wish I could have seen this year. Yeah, I would say they would for sure be on top of the NCHC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, they already are, basically. So Not that it would... I mean, North Dakota would still be up there, obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, Omaha's having a great year. Same with St. Cloud State. But, I mean, like you said, the talent coming back would have been nuts with, I mean, Richards, Perunovic. It never uh, ends. Just everybody. I want, them, I want them back. Plus, then you have the recruiting class like Kaiser, Biondi coming off. Like, oof. So, yeah, obviously, they're still going off this year. Uh, I love it as a UMD fan, and they're really starting to take off. Like the rest of their schedule, they're coming off a sweep with Western Michigan, and they got Miami twice, I think, St. Cloud State one more time, and then Western Michigan twice, and CC once. Mm-hmm. So they don't play Omaha, they don't play North Dakota. Yeah, I mean, a favorable schedule for sure, and yeah. uh, I think they'll get in automatically this year. So yeah. um, <laughs> it, nice. it helps. It helps with North Cornell this year, you know. So I think that's yeah, that's one that team too. out of the sweet out of the sixteen. So. Um, We'll see, though. We'll see. I mean, it comes down at the end of the year, like he said, um, just having an experience, but uh, it comes down to a hot goalie and a good freshman class is huge when you lose that many guys, which they have, so they'll be fine. Yeah. But I think that, like you said, the goalies can be the biggest thing. Like, not that either Tendi, like Fant- Fanti, their, their starter, Fanti, I hope I'm not butchering the shit out of that, but he's been <laughs> solid, but I mean, it's not like you've been looking back there, you see your dad just <laughs> holding it down for the last three three years, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. He's he's there in the playoffs. He plays almost every game beforehand. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's gonna be different without him, but yeah, they'll have that bid and they'll be in the dance if they keep this up. So yeah, I mean, I'll do anything to see that slick turd that we saw tonight in the blue line. Oh my goodness, dude. <laughs> he was ready. Like we're our guests are starting to dress up more. Yeah, like, yeah. Last week, this guy was in a room. I mean, could you tell he played for the dogs? He had two flags on the left, the J in the back. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Plus, I mean, just that shirt looked like it was paid for by UMD. <laughs> I mean, the boy, the Swain Show, it is sponsored, I yeah, would say. Like, it is. My God. He was ready for the pod, ready for every answer, you know, kept it professional. Mm-hmm. He's ready for the next level. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Just needs one more ring. Yep. And it'll go out. He doesn't need it. One yeah. more on the middle <laughs> finger. Right on the middle finger. But let's uh, let's jump into all the action that we missed from, not missed, but to recap for the fans here yeah. from last week. Uh, give me your top, give me your top story, top series. How about that stood out to you? I mean, obviously the Gophers was something... Um, that made me that question. Out. That made me question just what what's going on this year a little bit. Twenty to two. Yeah. I mean, scoring breakout. Not that ASU. PJ has Fleck had trouble up. trouble putting up that many points this year. So I mean, the fact <laughs> that the Gophers did that, uh, that's an eye yeah. opener for me. You know, I think they after getting swept from Notre, um, Notre Dame, like that's that's a big response from them and something right. that I expected, but not not twenty to two. I mean, that was insane. Yeah, it didn't shout you... out to make my boy McManus there in the Hattie and Sammy Walker there. Double Hatties. Double Hatties, same night. Crazy. I mean, they're putting. That, that hasn't happened since the Vanek days, so that, that was fun to watch. But um, other than that, you know, away from the you know the bias there, um, <laughs> I liked. I really liked the UConn series with BC. I thought that was interesting. A couple shootouts there, and uh, yeah, UConn's legit. Yeah, like, I mean, they, they just keep surprising every, every series this year. Like mm-hmm. you can't sleep on them. Obviously, much more defensive team, but they're finding yeah. ways to score on. Yeah. You know, BC obviously like keeping it. You know, a split there is crazy. That's what moved our rankings. We got BC back back at four this week Mm -hmm. because of all that. And I think the biggest one that I almost wanted to put top ten was BU with the sweep over Maine. Huge. Uh, Obviously, Maine not having the best year, but I mean that's five straight for BU. They got a huge series with BC coming up here. Uh, David Ferentz has I think fourteen points in eight games. Yeah. Just or six games, something like that. Six games. It's effing crazy. Whatever it is, they're scoring at will. They're going to be a team to beat. Like if they split with BC, I'm putting them top 10. 
Yeah, I, I mean, wanted to. Do I think already. that's the goal for them this weekend. Obviously, BC's favored with you know the amount of talent they have in their team, but yeah. don't uh, underestimate BU. They're hot right now, but uh, yeah, also don't underestimate uh, don't underestimate my Beavs. Huge sweep Beavs, this weekend, that, and uh, I'm surprised you didn't lead in with College it. Town. Nah, I, you wanted. To. I wanted to, but the Gophers winning twenty to two, twenty yeah. to two. Yeah, ten goals back to back nights versus another Division One team that's been in the top twenty for two, three years straight, now, two years straight now. So, um, but yeah, shout out to my bees, huge sweep at home there over Bowling, a tough Bowling Green team this year, man. They've been just nails, but uh, that hurts them a little bit. It does. That one hurts, you know. And now it's um, now the bees could sneak it's, in. It's just yeah, yeah, you never know. It's top of the standings of all like them, Bowling Green, Cato. They're all having solid years, so we'll see where that goes, but. Uh, other than that, just tough weekend for Northern Michigan again. Uh, <laughs> okay. Just you had to bring them up. I I just thought I was thinking Dub Sean's like oof Northern Michigan and yeah. it's just a struggle. Sorry Griff, but you... I feel bad for him. I I told you like Griff's just ready for his senior year. <laughs> I told you like this one like it's a COVID season. Hey there, Jan. Just give it you time. Know? Give it time. You never know. They flip the switch, man. They could go win every game. You just never know yeah. after this. Plus our boy Gansky. Yeah, yeah. Ganner. T- tough Ganner. That's Ganner. Like- yeah, you guys are close. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, tough freshman year for them. Obviously, they were, you know, they were, what, top three, top four in the WCHA last thought, season? Uh, yeah. So, like, I don't know. It's it's tough. It's yeah. tough to predict. But um, what, what was the other big series? Uh, I mean, like, the bigger story is, like, Wisconsin-Penn State split. Wisconsin almost came back in that second game there. Mm-hmm. That was pretty crazy. Like, I was hoping that they would, you know, flip the script and end up with a sweep there. They would have stayed in our top ten if that happened. But Penn State had a, you know, good second game against them. Uh, Ohio State, Michigan State splits, and then you have like the bigger teams. Mankato swept, obviously. Uh, Nodak swept. Omaha split with Denver. So they stayed in our top ten. But you know, I'm trying to think of other games that stood out. Really, it was just teams holding court. Yeah, and I think BC. I want to say holding court as, as far as the Michigan series because that series was that's yeah. that's the one series I, I didn't get to watch a lot of college hockey this past weekend, but I Michigan. saw I saw clips of that, and that was uh, a lot of scale on both teams there. But Michigan with a big sweep. I don't know what was going to happen. I thought sweep, but I thought, you know, Notre Dame could maybe take one, but who knows? Yeah. Um, that's going to be interesting to come down to the end of the year, though. Who do you think for the top of the Big Ten? It's got to be Michigan, Minnesota, isn't it? Yeah, those are my one, two, for sure. And I Wisconsin, say, three, I'd say. Wisconsin, three, but Penn, like, they're honestly pretty even. Penn um, State, it's been really heating up. They got they got one back the second night. Um, they're kind of flat the first night, but other than that, it's... Yeah, I would say as far tight. as, like, it's the same... You know, not the same Wisconsin team as last year, but offensive no. firepower. And that's again Wisconsin. another another team. You know, you you, you keep uh, you keep Turks and you keep Miller. I mean, pff, who knows yeah. what they you know where they'd be? Maybe just right there with Michigan this year. So yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. It's it's tough. You always hate seeing people leave early, but you got to live your dream when you get the chance. You know, so I can't can't fault them either. But uh, yeah. trying to grow the game, you want if if those players stay in the game for a year or two longer, it just grows the game more. You know. Right. More talent staying, so which is different compared to you know, I mean every sport is different. I guess like football players True. are more likely to stay till you know three four years. Basketball, it's kind of getting back. Football's to that hard because the NFL is so hard to make it there, man. But it's you, yeah, it's more way easier to get injured in one game. Your career is over. So well, now this year you can just hop on the taxi squad. <laughs> like, <look laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy. Shout out by the way, Drew O'Connor. Yeah, Dartmouth, big a follower start. of ours. Um, Apparently, yeah, yeah got number ten it. too. They must really. I mean. Did that guy take the first team meal? He must have just paid for the first one because number 10 is yeah. a good number to see. I mean, Keandre got 79 on the blue line. That's a tough number, but you are nice. <laughs> Shout out to the first goal of the night for Keandre from the point. Yeah. Absolute missy. Um, it was. He was just loading. Yeah, I mean, he was one. just, yeah, got it. And uh, that, that's got to feel good. Another Minnesota boy there. From Tonka. Well, um, isn't uh, Leno like 63 or something? I mean, he didn't uh, 43. 43. 43. And uh, yeah, he was in town versus the Wild this weekend. Um, helped me lose 85 bucks the other night. And that was just, <laughs> thank you. Shots, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we we bounce back. We bounce back. And uh, yeah, he'll be coming on the pod to pay me back. But mm. it is what it is. But a lot of, lot of you know, who else do we think was going to make it their debut? I mean, Prunovich eventually this year. Prunovich soon. Zegers they said Turks. Be coming soon. Turks maybe by the end of the year. Who knows? Yeah, because he's dealing with an injury, right? He is, and LA is dealing with other losses right now. So we'll. we'll I would say Swayman's got to get a shot. I would hope. I would really hope, but you don't know. Um, Another stud who just the work ethic, and like he's probably just like you know at this point instead of fishing, he's wrestling down sharks, just (laughs) not being able to get the start. So I would I would book on Sway. I would say Dugan probably gets a shot. (laughs) Yeah, that's what that's. Vegas, I mean, they're undefeated right now. I still think. Yeah, why? They might as well. But just, they like, could dabble. use a little more offense. They're not winning. By, they're not <laughs> blowing out teams by any means. They got a solid decor. 
Um, but yeah, other than that, keep people healthy, you know, like F it, we can win with anybody. Let's, why not the guy who led college hockey in points and landscaping? And I mean, yeah, he's a, he loves the landscape. Yeah, guys, just, loves forget it. Forget that. <laughs> you know, even when you're on an NHL contract, you can still get gritty. Yeah, you be coming on pucks in deep two times in a week, but landscaping mm. first. Yeah, well, obviously, landscaping comes first. <laughs> <laughs> just ripping. There's no way he listens. So no, we're cool. good. We're fine. Next time we want to interview, though, we might we might be screwed. Yeah, that's. So we should mention uh, our boy, last epi, Jack Adams, Providence. They did split with UMass. I mean, just the lowest scoring series ever. Yeah, I hope yeah. he took the under. Because um, I think, what was it, both OT shootouts? Mm-hmm. I think that, uh, was it? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think they both went shootouts. So they, yeah, they did. They Providence did. took the first one, yep. I think, then UMass. So, you know, kind of a, a wipe there. And then you got Quinnipiac and Clarkson splitting. So those are the, the bigger series at the end there. And then not to be, you know, oh, for Don. Hurst. Okay, obviously Mercy. We got we've been what's up with Mercy or they just been coming know. on our they, radar this year. I think it's boys that, score. I think it's the addition of Johnny um on the on the ECH squad. A lot of Mercy here's content's been flowing. Yeah. Well, I got out our ass here, but uh well, let me get the, they deserve it though. They've won a fair amount of games. My boy Hank in between the pipes there for uh, Mercy Hurst. Yeah, Hank, dude, he's a guy. He's having a yeah. year there and is definitely keeping him in every game, no doubt. So yeah. Um that, but let's let's talk about one more thing. The the Liberty game versus LIU. True. Um we got a little yeah. ACHA D one versus Versus Division One, there uh, Metcalf, little hunover coming in that game, but other than that, he's probably you know, up editing, long night editing. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. University but uh, but yeah, sucks. you know, it's it's an interesting thing. You just like it's an exhibition game, so you know, you I've seen it many years. Like you know, USA is beating the Gophers, their development teams beating the Gophers. Well, you know, Gophers are up partying the night before, and they're just it's right. a practice to them. But to Liberty, you know, or to USA dev, dev team, it's it's everything. Um, they're trying to develop their skills, and I think LIU still try to do that too, but. Uh, yeah, Liberty got the best of them, and Liberty wins. Was it two one? Two one the first night, and then it was a different comes story. Back yeah, with a hammer for nothing. Just hammer shark. The next night. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yeah, I I felt like Metcalf. Please don't kill us. You're a big dude. Yeah, we we recognize that, but yeah, I mean, obviously a big moment moment for Liberty, and you know, any ACHA college hockey player out there, anybody. Not I think I think that was a good thing for LIU. Now watch out for them the rest of the year when they have games that actually count. Yeah, it I think they just put that under their belt and say, all right, watch us go now. We'll beat the shit out of this next team. True. I would not want to be on the next, you know, having LIU in my, my rink this weekend. Yeah, I noticed even their social media team, like, didn't put out anything. Like, they didn't care. Like, I, I had to find everything through Liberty Twitter, which is difficult. Let me tell you that. Yeah, I bet. And then the next no night, funding, I like, couldn't imagine. here's where we're playing. Here's the stream to watch. And they're throwing, you know, highlights. They're like, yeah, we're going to, you know, just ream it the next night. Mm-hmm. So, it even woke up the media people. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah. Nice to see from the Sharks there. Uh, but yeah, so that happened. One last thing, uh, Jonathan Bendorf with the longest gritty of all time for Mercyhurst. Yeah, oh, man, that was, that, in there. that was gritty. Surprised he didn't get punched, but you know, pulled it off. Could you imagine two handed across the face while you're doing that? I mean, <laughs> he went right across the bench, dude. That's <laughs> that's how you get lined dangerous. up next shift. I mean, that's how you get a shoulder between the eyes. So he, want, he did it for the content for ECH when we're, we appreciate. He knew that. we were dry that weekend and last weekend, and yeah. he came up big. And that's that's a that's a shower guy. That's a that's a great guy. That's that a loop guy run. right there. Okay. Okay. So let's move to <laughs> this next week. Uh, again, this week it's kind of slow. So actually, let's get a quick shout out. So we're recording here on Tuesday night. Uh, Eric Otto lighten up the sheet. Oh, another big, no, yeah. yeah. Goal and an assist. He there might have more. They ended up with eight. Uh, let me just click live box because if I miss another fucking tuck from our guy, I'm going to be pissed. No, no other tuck. <laughs> another, another apple. Two assists for our guy. Yeah, just. I mean, I'm imagining about 10 blocks. Just when you thought you haven't hit the refresh button enough. I mean, yeah, boom. It's, it's another right tuck, there. Another assist. And then Bentley with a win. They uh, That's their seventh game of the season. Holy Cross. I don't know. I was heard crickets sl- after that it's one. It's a slow week, yeah. And then we got <laughs> Notre Dame, Penn State, and Mercyhurst RIT Thursday, and then we get a bigger slate here Friday, Saturday. What's uh, what's jumping out to you from the weekend matchups that we have? Uh, huge one for me. All oh, got postponed. Son of a bitch. Which one is that? Huntsville at Mankato. You know, that's <laughs> what I wanted to see. I wanted to see an upset, but that one yeah. won't be happening. I just got a text. Well, I'm mad about... I got a text. The Beavs are canceled this weekend with uh, Lake State, so that sucks too. Um, Hell, Dub Chuck. I mean, what Huntsville has one sweep in the last ten years, and then right after they just get iced for a yeah, month. Yeah, if, I don't know. If I'm a Charger, I'm, I got questions. I That's think uh, Notre Dame Penn State would be a really good series. I'd, I'd, I'd say split there. Yeah. Again, Big Ten, Michigan State, Wisconsin. I'll take a split there too. Michigan State. Uh, I'm gonna go sweep Wisconsin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Michigan State's look shaky this year, but I, they They're came up back and got one. Yeah. I mean. It really depends, but I would say, I Tough want to say Wisconsin State, to, sweep, yeah. to sweep there. Like they really should. They need to sweep. Wisconsin really needs that sweep next same couple. Same with Notre Dame if they want to. Yeah, know, that too. Stay, but obviously, stay the, the series of the weekend has to be BU at BC, a huge rivalry there. And uh, there's one more, I would say. 
Actually, oh, two more. There's absolutely. a couple nice series. Yeah, here. UMass, UMass Lowell, um, UMass. I mean, that's 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 another one. I'm thinking. Um, hold on. Denver, Colorado College postponed though. No, I was thinking North Dakota, Omaha. It's not a huge drive. Like that's not as big as BC or BU. Or not as big. Not UMass, as big. Or UMass Lowell. Another big one is uh, Michigan Tech, Bowling Green. People are sleeping on Michigan Tech, eight three and one, mm, and yeah. they're shutting out everybody. Like they, what is their goalie save percentage? Like nine sixty, nine seventy, something like that. He's got back to back shutties cooking. I mean, they're our boy Trenton Bliss is lighting <laughs> them up. New that's Hampshire Providence. Series. That'll be a good one. That that's another one. I and our boy uh, Crookshanks back. He's been hurt for a while. Yeah. They obviously struggling. They need him in the lineup. So hopefully he just tears it up. That'd be nice. And I could throw some, you know, little clips from. Absolutely. There we go. We could use that. We could use you know, that. Kind of scratch um, my own back there. But yeah, I would say BU, BC has to be the biggest series yeah. of this weekend. Like, I mean, those are just the rivalry itself. And then two teams that easily could be top 10 mm-hmm. after this week. I mean, I want to see David Ferentz continue mm-hmm. to put up about two points a game. And yeah, we'll see. Nice. We'll definitely see with that. And then uh, as far as the dub chop, just Michigan Tech, Bowling Green, two ranked teams that, uh, both yeah. really need wins this weekend. So we'll see where that one goes. I'll take a split there, though. Split there. And then let's just wrap it up with uh, Duluth is going to roll over Miami. I mean, you have the <clears throat> you come off a hot podcast like this. Swain show just grease back flow. Um, yeah, they're running out of hair gel in the locker room, but they should right. still find a way to get a sweep this weekend. I think so. I think beyond he's going to try to impress for the fellows, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously he hasn't been lighting up the sheet, but I think he's been saving them. He got a little shout out. I mean, we talked about it. he got some yeah. screen time, not screen time. He'll get some screen time. We got to find the ugliest picture beyond and just put it on there this weekend on the show. He's a good looking cat. Yeah, it's you just find, a, just find a bad one. All right. We'll oh, get Sabs look one up. Yeah, Sabs, he'll love that. <laughs> nice little assignment for a guy there. But yeah, dogs have a nice matchup. They should sweep that. But I mean, Miami has been tough and, you know, can roll out a win. They have, they got uh, Ludwig. Yeah. Person. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. I'm um, just, again, the 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 weekends are you know coming down to it's playoff time almost it's, right you know well, we're it's back six in, weeks to playoffs so it's teams it's are traveling here. teams are it's all weekend series for the most part now yep like it's 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 feeling like a regular season at this point yeah absolutely so and fans are starting to come back in like you said I just hope yeah in six weeks we can there. get some more fans in there and uh, oh, that's all I want it's a lot of time for us to grow uh, too as as ECH and hopefully we get to twenty eight twenty nine thirty thousand there by playoffs I want that conference playoffs. That'd be sweet. Get the boys rolling and uh, yeah. Otherwise, we're showing up to roll call uh, as soon as UMD tweets about it. Yep, Only absolutely. We're getting in the building. That's so. that, that would take them tweeting about it though. That's Gotta gonna be pay tough. Our dues. Yeah, I, <laughs> I swear to God, Champ has to run the Twitter. <laughs> Champ, just with the pause too. That's He's just never, going. <laughs> again, we just want to thank you guys for for tuning into the pod today. Uh, special shout out to Nick Swaney. Yeah, uh, guy who's gonna be a top ten Hobie candidate. For Another sure. Minnesota native guy. We just we have the pipeline of Minnesota guys here um, that have right. come through this podcast and Minnesota hockey. Yeah, you know nothing better, nothing better. I think he, he hit it right on the nails with um, talking about high school hockey here and and uh, just the state tournament itself and how that develops players. We've seen so many players that we've talked to. You know, started in Minnesota high school hockey and then went to juniors and college right. now in NHL. So. Well, a guy um, who makes all the right decisions and clearly made another one by coming on Pucks and Deep. Yeah, that's so, that's I mean, one of the best things you can do for your career without a doubt. So yeah, that in itself. Uh, smart cats. So shout no, out but, to him. Oh, no, we're thankful. And thanks, UMD, for letting uh, your star come on. And let's see if yeah. we can see three from UMD here this year. I, I want to see it because I think the best performance we've had after pod, Otto. Yeah. I think Otto's the he, one that's tore up the most. Week to week, yeah. I mean, uh, Combs is, Combs is, Combs Combs is going very, in, yeah. I would say. But Otto, I think, still has the most... Total, I mean, three points tonight, man. Yeah. Look at the blocks. That's what I'm really right. watching. <laughs> I didn't talk about Sweeney's blocks. You know, usually he's getting over 20. We're only at four this season. Mm-hmm. Could we see a, a kick up in that? Possibly. I'm, I'm thinking so. Yeah. I think Sandy's going to get after him. So no matter what, all in all, just great Pucks epi. Deep. Just yeah. a gritty epi. Um, Pucks in deep. Yeah, man. Stay tuned for next week. Uh, more hard work coming on the show next week. That's a little, yeah. A little, uh, yeah. Just a little preview. Cool. Yeah. How about uh, Frank play us out? Frank.